ridiculous negative experiences from cast members who were not only rude, but cast members who harassed me, cast members who were creepy, uh, really creepy incidents happened, um, just like really, really bizarre stories. Hey guys, so this is gonna be a very different type of video and I think it's gonna come as a shock to a lot of you. Um, as you guys know, I recently came back from Walt Disney World. I went there for eight nights. I filmed a lot of vlogs and I had a lot of fun editing and putting those together on my channel. But behind the scenes, there were a ton of really bad experiences that happened um, that did not make it into my videos because realistically I wasn't filming when these things happened. And these things that happened were part of my trip and I don't feel that it is proper to just post my Disney vlogs and to forget that these things happened. There were a ton of things that happened behind the scenes that you guys did not see. Um, these were extremely bad experiences that were not like, oh, you're just not having a good time. I had full on uh, really creepy incidents happened, uh, just like really, really bizarre stories that happened and you just cannot believe that number one these things happened at disney world and number two that i paid hundreds of dollars a night for these experiences um this is not clickbait in any way but i am really going to just share with you guys what happened and why i have canceled my upcoming disney trip that was planned for this summer so i had a quite a few experiences this this past trip that I went to Walt Disney World that go way beyond people saying I just did not have a good time or paying for fast passes. I had really bad experiences at Walt Disney World that involved, for example, I'll get, and I'm gonna go into all of it, but to give you a start, involved creepy cast members, uh, cast members that were harassing me, cast members that were rude, really 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 bad experiences so um i guess i just have to like get into it and explain the things that happened on this trip so i live in miami florida i went up to orlando to have a vacation i was super excited about it It was my first time going on vacation now in a while since the pandemic and i checked into one of their moderate resorts at walt disney world for a eight night stay it was very expensive I bought yearly passes um, and I kind of like really went all in to have this great trip. I guess one of the first really creepy incidents that happened involves something that not a lot of people know about, which is called um, the um, house person at your resort that does mandatory room inspections. So I did not know, and not many people know, that at Walt Disney World, at all of their resorts, no matter if it's a value resort, a moderate resort, or a deluxe resort. Every single resort, every single room, every day or every other day at the most, Disney will perform a mandatory room inspection where a house person will visit your room, whether you are there or not there, and they will inspect your room. So I had no idea this existed. Um, so when this house person knocked on my door i was super confused um so if i had known about this i guess like i could have just like stepped out and like kind of knew it was coming but it caught me really off guard because like i was changing and i didn't understand why they were there so they knocked on the door and they said i am house person and i am here to do the inspection of your room to inspect your room and i'm like inspect what and they were like oh I'm looking for things and I'm like looking for what and I continue to ask them questions and they're not explaining anything they're not explaining like a Disney policy nothing it's just like I'm here to inspect your room what are you looking for I asked oh we're looking for a lot of things I'm like is it just my room is it a lot of rooms like what is, why are you here then he goes on to finally say we do this at all like all the rooms and I'm like okay so come back in a little while when can I come back? I'm like, I don't know. I'm changing to go out. So um, as I continue to ask this house person questions about why the inspection was happening, because he was really just like aggressive and he didn't want to really answer any questions. 
he continued to get more aggressive. So I'm like, why are these inspections taking place? Like, are you like, are you just checking my room? Because I had never heard of this before. So at that point, he makes a inappropriate comment that he should not have made. It, it, the comment was so bad that I don't, I don't even want to go there and say what he said, but he said a really bad comment. And I just like stayed calm. And at that point he goes on to then get more aggressive. And he's like, you know what, I'm gonna report you. I'm like, report me for what? For asking questions about why a room inspection is happening? All I'm asking as a guest is, I have a right to privacy in my room and I do not understand why this room inspection is happening. And you're not even explaining to me until the very last minute that this is a Disney policy. You're just some creepy dude coming to my room saying that you need to inspect my room when I told you I'm changing. It was kind of weird. So at that point, especially because he told me he's going to report me, I got dressed very quickly and went straight over to the lobby to get someone's attention because I felt really freaked out. So I didn't get in line for like to go up to like guest service. I walked straight up to a woman who was like in a business outfit and not in a cast member outfit who I assumed was kind of some sort of uh, manager of the lobby area. So she um, immediately takes it seriously, I guess and gets my information, my number, and basically a low-level supervisor of the hotel ends up having to meet with me and explain not only their policy, but to apologize for what this cast member said to me. Um, it, they made up all kinds of excuses. On the one hand, they apologized for what he said, uh, they told me all these excuses. He's stressed. We've all been very stressed with COVID. He's like, we have a quiet place at the at the resort that that stressed cast members can work out their issues and things like that. And it's like, and like, he, as this low level supervisor or whatever he was, like, uh, he wasn't the manager of the hotel. It was like a different position. Is trying to like kind of calm down the situation. He's also very condescending. He's talking over me. I'm trying to explain that I, you know, what happened. And he's talking over me. He's not letting me speak. And I even felt like he was getting aggressive. It was almost like you brought something to their attention at Disney that's pretty bad because of what this cast member said to me. And you are now trying to somehow get aggressive or talk to me aggressively. So at that point, I just tried to like, toned down the situation and I just like ended up agreeing with him I'm like you're right they must all be very stressed because of you know everything everyone's been through in the pandemic and he was probably just having a bad day because I literally felt that if I didn't agree with this supervisor and say you know what you're right this cast member what he said to me he was having a bad day I literally literally felt that they were going to ask me to leave the resort that's that's how much I felt that they twisted the situation so then they credit me back $50, which was like so weird. And he's like, here's $50. Why don't you go check out the beignets and go have some food? So we, we said to him, to the supervisor, we're like, you know, what he said to me and your apologizing was not acceptable. Okay, you have, to, you have this policy where you have to inspect the rooms. That's fine. But like, can you get someone else to do it? Can you get another house person to inspect our room? Because you have a situation where this guy is kind of creepy and he's not he's not behaving properly. Oh, and by the way, um, when I was on the way to talk to this supervisor in the lobby, um, he was going around to another room and I don't know what he said to this woman's door that he knocked on, but she full on slammed the door on him. So it wasn't just me. This was a guy that was obviously not, let, let's, let's give him the benefit of the doubt. He was not trained well. So I said to them very honestly in the lobby, okay, you have to do this policy, whatever. Can you send someone else? Can you send someone else to my room? Because I don't want to encounter this guy again. They did not do that. So like, again, they're doing this thing every day or every other day. So like one or two days goes by, this guy shows up again. So I don't see him again that day. But I saw him again, I think two days later. So he comes around to do the room inspection. He's extremely cocky this time he sees me. He's like, when he sees me, he goes, hello again. I see you again. It was just like, I again, in the back of my head, I am paying 
you know, $400 or over $400 a day with everything combined to be at this resort to essentially be completely harassed by this creepy dude. Um, so he comes, he's like, may I inspect your room? I'm like, okay. So he comes in the room, he closes the door, he's in my room with the door closed. I have another person with me, so I'm not alone. But um, he comes in the room and he closes the door behind him. He doesn't walk around the room or inspect. He just stands in place, looks around the room like this, and then he goes, so is there anything you would like to tell me? I'm like, no. He's like, is there anything you would like to discuss with me? And I'm like, no. And he's like, okay, so if everything is okay, I'm gonna leave now. I'm like, okay. But it was a really uncomfortable situation. And again, it's a situation where you have yourself realizing, I am paying $400 a night for this experience. And this guy is in my room with the door closed and being like, is everything okay? Is there anything you would like to talk to me about? No. And I don't even think he's supposed to ask you anything like that. Honestly, their policy says, which is a little bit strange as it is, I'm gonna be honest, that they're allowed to come to the room and they're allowed to inspect, in quote, inspect. So I don't know what was with the questions he was asking me, but it was super creepy. So that was the incident with the house person at the resort, super disappointed in, in that incident, what he said to me, the fact that Disney did not remove him and allow this person to keep coming to my room. Um, I had another incident. It wasn't, uh, it was probably like a more low level incident. It was an incident that annoyed me where this cast member um, was addressing something about the price of something in the, in the, like, one of the areas. They immediately went into Spanish talking to me. Again, I am part Spanish, but with everyone else that they addressed and talked to, they spoke to them in English. But as soon as they came to me, they immediately went into Spanish. And although I am Spanish, I kind of felt very singled out. I don't understand why. I, I, some people could argue, oh, maybe they were like trying to like talk to you in Spanish because they, they thought maybe you only spoke Spanish or like it was more like time efficient. I don't know. You could come up with excuses for it, but I felt singled out because even though I look ethnic, if you're talking to every other person in line in English, why are you talking to me in Spanish? Even though I am Spanish, but that's besides the point because I am actually multi-ethnic and I could be a variety of things. So that was that incident. Um, I had a very bad incident uh, registering for DAS, which is the Disney Disability Service um, System. So it allows for people who have registered disabilities uh, they don't make you show your medical documentation, even though I brought it, to not wait on the physical line. You still wait the line, but you're not on the line. So I have used DAS before, but you have to re-register every time you go to Disney. So I had an experience where when I went to go register for Disney, for the DAS Pass, I went to the, um, <clears throat> to the Epcot customer service, guest service location, which is at the very front of the park. I get online, they go through the simple questions, like why do you, like how will the pass benefit you, and blah, blah. And this man says, okay, you are approved for DAS, takes my photo. He's a little like, it's not nice, but he's not mean either. He's just kind of very standoffish. Um, I answered his questions, blah, 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 and, um, he takes my photo, and I had questions on how DAS works because um, I haven't been there since they instituted the Genie Plus and all this stuff, so I didn't really understand, do you use the app for DAS, how does this work? And I'm like, do you go up to a cast member for a comeback time, or you use the app? And he, he doesn't answer my question, which was kind of a red flag, and he just, he just like kind of barks at me, that's how it's always been. So he never actually answered my question. I'm like, well, do you use the, the app or do you go up to a cast member? How does this work? And he's like, that's how it works. And I'm like, okay. So later in the day, when I went to go actually get a comeback time to use my DAS, the cast member scans my, my magic band and tells me I'm not registered for DAS. So that cast member was very nice. They felt bad for the situation and they gave me a comeback time like that's under like a different coding, like you had an issue or something like that. So I go over to the guest services, which is towards the back of the Epcot park. And I'm like, what is going on? I just came from guest services at the front of the park. And the man told me that 
I was registered for DAS and now they're telling me that I'm not registered for DAS. And basically that cast member did the whole process again, re-registered me for DAS. And I'm like, why did this happen? And he's like, he didn't register you for DAS. And I'm like, so I went to the DAS location, I answered all your questions. I offered to show you my medical documentation. You took my photo. You told me I was approved for DAS and I'm on the system for DAS. But then when I go to go to the ride, I'm not registered for DAS. And this cast member confirmed that, that this person did not register you for DAS. Again, no apologies. Again, you can try to give the benefit of the doubt and be like, maybe the internet wasn't working and like it didn't go through. But when he went on the system, he said that I was not, I was not on there. I was, he saw that I had DAS from previous years, but he said that as far as the entry of that day, it didn't exist. So there was that. Um, so I actually got my phone because this is where I actually wrote notes to like the different things that happened. Um, so yeah, that day that he didn't register for me DAS, what ended up happening was by the time I got to the ride, the ride had been shut down or this or that. And then the DAS was combined with the people who didn't get on the ride. And even though I had waited over three hours outside the line, which is how DAS works, when I got to the DAS line, they told me it would be three hours because there were other people combined and different things and I don't know and I never got on the ride. So I'm looking at my phone for other reasons. Some of the other reasons, and I agree with it, that people have said they are kind of disgusted right now with going to Disney. Uh, I agree with this exorbitantly high prices, which I was willing to pay. And crowds, um, kind of what I refer to as the current pay to play Genie Plus. Um, it's made the parks feel more like a carnival rather than a resort system. That technically doesn't affect me because I use DAS when it works. Um, Okay, I want to make a point and say I grew up going to Disney. I grew up going to Disney. I love Disney. I went to Disney, you know, I was probably going to Disney five times a year, every year since I was basically an infant. Okay, I love Disney and I grew up basically at Disney. Um, oh, something that, you know, a lot of girls are mentioning right now on TikTok and I definitely would affirm is I think the Disney dress code policy has kind of been taken too far. Okay, if you want to argue that a woman's shirt that has a tie on it or a flimsy tie on that, and that could be an issue because it could theoretically come undone, okay, we'll go with that one. But some of the things that I've seen on TikTok and, and different things like that, you know, a girl's shorts, the shorts are too short. It's like, take a look at Abercrombie or Hollister. Every single pair of denim shorts that they sell would get you banned or like dress coded for the day at Disney. I think it's gone way too far. I feel like it's basically targeting young, pretty girls. That if you're a young, pretty girl and you're wearing short shorts, it's not gonna go well. You're going to be told to basically wear a maxi skirt, maybe a nice, you know, cardigan over it and a scarf. And when you Google this with the Disney dress code policy, there's actually a blog that I'm gonna see if I can insert a photo of that. There's actually a blog that comes up that make sure you are dressed to Disney how you would be dressed to church. I am not making this up. That's actually what comes up. But I wouldn't think that that would happen at Universal and I don't think that that happens at Universal. So I was very, very well aware of kind of this Disney dress code policy that I believe has gone way too far. So I was constantly like very aware of what I was putting on that day and really trying to be private, pri like trying to be church appropriate basically. And because I didn't want to purposely get dress coded and ruin my trip basically. So I, I it's made me very self-conscious their policy with that. Um, the other thing, I had some kind of weird incidents, honestly, with Disney security. It was very odd. I had a Disney security member, um, and ironically, this actually happened like five years ago, and it was like the same type of comment that happened again. I'm actually curious if it's the same person like five years later. So I have a beautiful pair of sunglasses that are by Prada. I don't have that many expensive sunglasses. I have like three, but I wore my Prada sunglasses to Disney, and this cast member, was full on like making fun of my sunglasses. So my bag beeped going through the metal detector because I had my camera in it and uh, also my sunglasses were in it. So he's like, oh, your sunglasses probably set it off. And I'm like, why? And he's like, because like of how they're made and like if you had like just like bought like, you know, like a regular pair of sunglasses that aren't like made like that, like really like, you know, like heavy duty, then they probably wouldn't have set off the machine. 
And I'm like, but they're really nice pair of sunglasses. And he's like, yeah, but like, that's just like how it is with those sunglasses. Like if you're gonna like buy Prada sunglasses and stuff like that, it's gonna set off the machine. So like it went on and on and on. It was just like, and, and some of you may be like, oh, like maybe that was his way of like flirting with you or something like that. It wasn't, it was creepy. It was, I felt like I, I don't wanna talk to this man about my, my, my spending habits for that matter. You could come back and say, the money that I'm wasting on a lounge fly at Disney is not worth it. It's like, I really don't wanna discuss my spending habits on why I bought sunglasses. There was another incident with Disney security where I was wearing probably dress code worthy in their eyes. Um, these short shorts that were made of like a spandex material, like workout shorts. And I had my bare legs, obviously, and sneakers. And uh, the metal detector went off because of my camera. And um, this guy um, wanded my backside in these spandex little shorts um my shorts very clearly you know show your silhouette they do not have any pockets to them they're a very 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 thin um like bathing suit material um yeah there, there's there's nothing you know no pockets nothing so he wanded my backside and he also wanded um my bare legs so that was kind of weird um, you know, everyone else was just kind of like going through and I'm like there as this dude is like wanding my backside and my bare legs. So yeah, um, I want to make it very clear. I like Disney a lot. I grew up in what was called, I guess, the golden era of Disney. Every movie I had was Disney. I went, I grew up in Miami. I went to Disney five times a year from Miami and always stayed in very expensive hotels. Like I, I would go to the Animal Kingdom for two weeks of one of those five trips. In other words, I was going to Disney five times a year, two weeks a time, staying in resorts like, like, like the Animal Kingdom Lodge or the Grand Floridian and doing that five times a year. So I was a very good Disney customer. And I don't feel that that Disney exists anymore. I felt like the issues that I had at Disney go beyond what you hear a lot of people complaining about, which is like, oh, now people pay for fast passes or now people pay for um, parking at the hotel. That's something that didn't happen before. Like it goes beyond that. Like a lot of people are complaining about like the prices and like how different amenities don't exist anymore. And what they're referring to is the in quote magic being gone. I feel like the incidents I had happen at Disney exceeded that and really fell into the realm of harassment. I don't know if it was because of, you know, you know, young girl, you know, you know, and you kind of get attention and things, you know, that, you know, you always have, it's possible to have a creepy employee and, you know, you get someone's attention in the wrong way. I don't know, but I had a number of creepy incidents happen that have kind of made me feel like, why am I doing this? Why am I paying for this? If I go on, I had, so I came back home and I feel like I was in denial. I'm going to be very honest with you because like a lot of you will be like, you filmed all of these Disney vlogs that are on your trip because I didn't want to accept that these things had happened and that the Disney I loved, which was such a big part of my life, doesn't seem to be there anymore. Um, when you watch some of my Disney vlogs, um, especially the ones that were towards the beginning of the trip where I went into the trip very, you know, positive and I guess it was idealistic of the experiences that were gonna happen, I'm happier and I'm peppier, but if you actually watch my last Disney vlog that I posted, it's actually, I think, titled Last Day at Disney, you can see that my mood in that video is definitely much more quiet uh, as compared to the first day and it wasn't because I was sad that I was going home it was because I had experienced so many incidents on this trip that I was my brain was having um, a little bit of difficulty processing the different things that had happened on this trip again I did not have on this trip the complaints that a lot of people have which is about prices and stuff like that I had full-on experiences creepy cast members, cast members that were, you know, where you could say you felt like you were harassed by them, um, creepy incidents, and it's just like, I'm paying for this? So like, paying, you know, over $400 a day combined with the room price and the, and the different taxes and the parking tax and the food and this and that, it's like, am I really paying for this? I could just stay home and probably not be harassed. Um, so, um, I came back home 
I um, edited my videos, I put my videos on my channel, and I've been just thinking about this and thinking about this and thinking about this. And I came back home and I actually booked another trip. It was kind of like just a complete denial. I booked another trip for the summer. And um, I made the decision today, uh, earlier today before filming this, that I was not going to fulfill that trip. And I was going to do other plans this summer. And I canceled the, the summer Disney trip, which was another very expensive trip, coming out to a couple thousand dollars for a week at Disney. And um, I canceled the trip because I don't want to have a repeat of these incidents. So, um, you know, I am someone who is trying to be an honest vlogger. Uh, when I, again, and there were moments at Disney where I had a good time. Uh, you know, I was legitimately happy in, at different moments in those vlogs. In other words, I'm watching the parade, I'm happy. But then, you know, you'd be done watching the parade and something would happen. So those were things that didn't get picked up in those vlogs and you don't always see what's happening behind the scenes like that. And it's just like, I don't feel, like I had to be honest and honest about um, talking about a lot of the experiences that happen behind the scenes. Um, so will I be going to Disney again in the future? Probably, but not now. Not now. Um, I really hope that a lot of their policies change or improve where, um, you know, a lot of these things don't happen, you know, like we don't need to be going off, you know, over to girls wearing short shorts and being like, I'm sorry, young lady, your short shorts are just too short. You know, different policies like that, like, you know, I mean, in the future, I may very well go there, but I feel like to go there in just like a month or so, drop another couple thousand dollars for an experience that I, I'm very fearful could be exactly what I just endured, uh, the answer is no. <laughs> so I'm going to do something else for summer and Disney's not going to be a part of it. Uh, so I wanted to tell you guys what happened. Um, you know, you could share your thoughts, anything, you know, your thoughts about like, you know anything you've been through and stuff like that but i wanted to share i hope you guys enjoyed the honesty and the vlog and i am going to go back to doing like a lot of like fashion vlogs again on my channel and like maybe vlogging around beautiful miami as well so i hope you guys liked the video and i will see you soon in my next video and bye